God. This is becoming a bit of a habit, isn't it? It's a habit that I'm going to break, hopefully, using hypnosis or some mental health practitioner to stop me from buying and unboxing vacuum cleaners. Well, I got this one, and this is bizarre. I like the colour of it. I opened and tested the Hoover Eco G Globe, and now I've got the Eco G Turbo Power. Not to be confused, of course, with the classic Hoover Turbo Power, all one word. This is Turbo Power, two words, and it bears no relation whatsoever to the classic 1980s Hoover Turbo Power. But anyway, it's it's a green colour, an opal white that I liked. Caribbean green, Caribbean green transparent and opal white. Here it is. I've never seen one of these in the flesh. I think um, I had a quick push of one in Comet a few years back. The first, I think it was the red version of this. And I saw it on offer in Argos and I thought, oh God, let's just buy it. Who knows? It might be, it might be good. It gets mixed reviews. A lot of comments are it's hard to push. Well, in my review following this unboxing, I will determine how hard it is to push. Well, that's it. It's model number UTE 1100. And it's a 1200 watt motor. So, not an energy guzzler, 1200 watts. That's not too bad. Right, I'm going to get this opened and assembled. Well, here we have the box lying down, because I think that'll be the easiest way to access. Just looking at the box, it says it's got full stair cleaning, long hose and cord combination. I think this has got a 12 meter cord, which is very good. And Pets Turbo Brush. What else is Hoover saying for this? It's powerful, multi-cyclonic. Long hose, done that. Full stair, easy, bin empty. Pets Turbo Brush, HEPA filtration. Any other details? No, just repeated on the back. So, without any further ado, let's get this little vacuum cleaner open, shall we? There we go. Right. Mmm, that's not good. Oh dear me. Has this been... Oops. No, I think that's part of the printing. Now, I'm a bit concerned the fact that this isn't even in a plastic bag with the Eco G Globe. At least it was in a plastic bag. But with this instruction book, it isn't. So hopefully the cleaner will be alright. There's a little bit of damage to the top of the box. Right, so it looks like I just have to assemble the handle and screw in two screws, I think. Oh no, I've got to screw in two screws and attach the hose hook. So it shouldn't be too much to assemble. First thing out. Looking rather dusty. That is not good. This is Argos. I got this from. That is dusty. And I would have thought that should have been in a bag. <sighs> Looking at it closer, it doesn't appear to have been used, but when you're buying a brand new vacuum, you don't expect that. But then again, this is from China. I don't think I've had anything like that when any of the German machines have I've opened. With every mealer I've opened though, there's always been a bit of grease on the extension tube, but I think that's just how they pack them. Right, speaking of extension tube, that's well, not. It's a crevice tool, but quite a nice long crevice tool. Right, here's the handle, rather ooh, loosely placed. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking at everything with a critical eye because I don't trust... Oh, that's not very good either. This this basically isn't a Hoover design. Or it is a Hoover design and they've allowed another manufacturer to use this design. But I have a feeling it's probably a generic design that has been branded Hoover. I've seen this machine on Amazon DE, German Amazon, under a different brand. No, that no, that looks broken, but it's not. It's just rough plastic. 
But what's pretty poor is the Hoover logo there. It's just sort of printed on. It's not, you know, a nice stuck on label, but it doesn't even, it's not even central to the handle. But anyway, what do you expect? A little bit of the old curly Q design element that features on the Eco G globe. And again, you've got fairly comfortable to hold handle. Not quite so rubbery. It is a bit rubbery, the grip in the Caribbean green. And we've got the screws just attached to the handle there. It feels all right, you know. I think it's time the vacuum came out of its cardboard coffin. Now it's, it's coming out backwards. Right. Let's try to keep it so I know which way it goes back in the box because invariably this will be ending up back in its box either because I'm going to sell it or because I'm just going to store it away in its box. So I'll pop those cardboard inserts back, pop that out of the way. Right, here we have the cleaner. I am a sucker for this colour scheme. I do like it. Oh, that's a pun, isn't it? I'm a sucker for a vacuum. Here's Hoover's. This is a pretty standard brush you get on a lot of the Hoover uprights. I think it was the same on the Smart Pet upright that I unboxed and demonstrated a while back. But no way is that a dusting brush. You know, it's stiff enough to get burnt off grease off your oven. I mean, it's not delicate. It's not a delicate brush, that. It's all right for, do you know, doing your car seats, I mean, your car carpets as well, you know, giving them a good scrubbing and releasing the dirt, but for dusting, your delicates, no. And of course, that comes off revealing, I hate these sort of nozzles. You know, I know they have to have multi-purpose nozzles so they can fit them on the machine, but that's the wrong shape, you know, for vacuuming. It's just, unless you swipe that way, I don't like them. But anyway, that's what you get with that. Now, a little bit of scuffing to the top. Let's have a feel of the brushes while I'm here. Oops. Mm, Semi-hard. Not too soft, but not too hard either. Right, that does seem like this is a long flex. There's a lot of flex here. Possibly would have nice to have the flex in the Caribbean green or even the opal white. The Caribbean green, it would have looked quite swish with a colour coordinated flex, but it doesn't. Ah, right. Well, on the instructions, now I don't think this is because the machine has been out of the box, I don't think so, but on the instructions it does show you to attach the hose hook. It's obviously attached, but I do think that that's because they have attached it at the um, factory in China. It's quite light, actually. Well, it'd be heavier when, when I've wound up the flex, because that does add quite a bit of weight. So, now I need to assemble the handle onto the top of the cleaner. Right then, so I'll just take off this protective piece covering this clip which I assume is for the turbo nozzle to clip to. There's obviously a space here shaped to fit the turbo nozzle and I'll just take a little packet with the screws and of course I've not got my screwdriver handy so I'll just have to do it by hand and do the screwing at a later point. Now I think I just have to locate it and push down. Let's see how this is going to work. Now I must go forward, that's it. Just getting it in the right... Let's take the bin off, I don't think that's going to make any difference, but there we are. That's it, and that's pushed down nicely. So now we've got two screw holes 
just above the hook for the hose support there. So let's take me screws out. Just two two basic screws there. There you go. Ooh. And I will insert them into the hole. Into one hole and into the other hole. So all I need now is just to screw these screws up, not too tightly, and then that's the assembly more or less done. Right, that's the handle screwed securely into place. Now I'm just going to take the hose, and yes it is very stretchable. Should have no trouble reaching up to the top of the stairs with that, but obviously I'll be showing you that in a future review. So I'll just pop, oh no, the hose actually goes up higher, it's a higher hook, and then it just fits into the bottom, just like that. And now I need to put, I'm going to put this on first actually, I don't want to force that in, no, does it go like that? No, it doesn't. I think you'd locate it at the bottom first. Well, that's in, but not, I don't think that's in properly actually. It does look like it fits more. No, but perhaps I'm right, it doesn't fit more securely in than that. Ah, is that the, no, that doesn't do it. Anyway, it goes in. I'll check if that's right at some point, but there's the onboard turbo brush. We've got another part, part here, another part here for the tool, so does that go on there I wonder, I expect it does, and then finally, ah, oh, oh no, it's going to say where's the extension tube, but it's okay, it's already fitted, so I assume that the crevice tool this slots into the top of that. Now all that's left is for me to wrap this very long cord around the two hooks here. The bottom hook seems to be fixed, but the top hook, that does have a release mechanism. This is pretty standard now. So you can release the whole load of cable in one rather than having to unwind like you had to do in the past. But this sort of feature, it's not really a very new thing. Even some of the 70s Hoover, old Hoover uprights had them. I think the junior, Dirt Searcher Junior, I had a Dirt Searcher Junior that had a, a turned down top hook, unlike the standard Junior, which didn't, and possibly some of the seniors did. But until then, it was just two fixed metal hooks. So that, it's a small feature, but it um, does make a little bit of a difference, I suppose. But they're, they're quite close together, these, and there's a lot of flex to fit on. So, I mean, there seems to be a fair amount of room on the hooks to, to wrap the cable round. But again, to me, why not make the cord match? But of course, this cord will have been produced for many different models. And to colour match the cord, although it would have been a nice touch, would have probably added to the cost. And as we know, manufacturers like to keep their manufacturing costs down, which means more profit for them. So things, little details like that, you don't often find, certainly on the lower end. Although this machine, if it was at its full price, and I think at the moment Hoover have this for some ridiculous price, about £299. Now, for £299 I would not be buying a, you know, Chinese-made vacuum cleaner, I would be going to the German manufacturers or even an Ilfisk, but I certainly wouldn't spend that much on something made in the People's Republic of China, but because this wasn't anywhere near that, less than a third of what Hoover have it currently on their website, for that it's worth that price to me. As you can see, there is a lot of flex and it does look rather messy. 
you've got your little built-in clip at the bottom again it's fairly standard which is another little thing but it's quite a useful thing to have so at the back of the machine this lower hook is actually for the hose let's remove the turbo nozzle but you see look at all this that doesn't look very attractive but that is for machines that don't have the extra long reach hose they do some machines that don't have such a long hose so for that there is a, an upper hook which goes on it makes the machine a bit less tidy looking I still haven't figured out how the best way to attach that nozzle but anyway we'll see in use if that's going to fall off seems fairly secure until maybe I release the pedal I'm not sure but anyway it's assembled and to be quite honest it does feel it feels quite oh I was going to say it feels quite robust until it went like that and then that and that doesn't that, that plastic doesn't feel very robust but it's got a nice bumper on the front so anyway let me take you through the features and functions of this Hoover Turbo Power Eco G Upright Cleaner. So here we have it, the Hoover Turbo Power Eco G Multicyclonic Total Reach Bagless Upright Vacuum Cleaner. So let's take take you through the features. I've not really looked at the instruction book. But I don't think there's much here that should flummox me. It's the back of the machine. You've got the little clip here that helps keep the cord higher up out of the way. So once you've unwound the cord, you clip it through there just to keep it higher up away from the base of the cleaner. Obviously you've got your long reach hose, your PETS turbo brush, your combined I don't know if you recall that a dusting tool, but anyway, combined brush and upholstery tool there. And on the other side, again, would be nice to have that colour matched. But, never mind, on the other side you've got your, your extension tube with your crevice tool inside. That clips on there. Staying at the back for now, of course that showed you, we've got the flex wound up with the quick release top cord hook. We've got here your foot release to release the machine into the operating and low positions. This is clear, this is the suction inlet. Um, so if it does get blocked up you can actually see through there if there is a blockage. Let's have a look at the rating plate. So it's Hoover model UTE 1100-001, serial 391-00380-1411-0267. Made in PRC, blah blah, 1200 watts, Hoover Limited, Merthyr, UK. And there's a Cardiff postcode there. While we're on the back here, got two wheels. Ooh. That's a pretty effect, isn't it? Um, they're rubber coated, so if you're cleaning hard floors, which I think this machine will probably fail at, I've just checked the instruction book and you're supposed to use it on the long pile setting, which raises the brushes way off the floor to avoid damaging the floor. It might avoid damaging the floor, but it'll also prevent any muck being picked up, but I'll be trying that later. Uprights to me that don't have the function to be able to turn the brush off for your hard floors on on the whole don't tend to score very well. Bit wobbly there. But that's equally wobbly, so it's probably how it should be. And I was just wondering where the mains on off button was, and I've just noticed it's here. So instead of that's quite convenient, I suppose, having it on one side, because often you'd have your handle release on one side and the mains on off button the other but they're on both sides here so you would obviously press that with your foot a little sticker there advising you where to get original hoover consumables and on the other side 
Uh, probably not on the other side. I thought I'd seen a sticker, another sticker somewhere. Oh yes, it's here, look. Let us help. Ring that, and it's a 08444 number. I don't know if that's a local rate call, I'm not sure. So here's the front of the machine. Again, we've got a little bit of curly Q design detail. Here is the bin, and it's quite a large capacity, certainly bigger than the globe. It's supposed to be multi cyclonic. Um, well, we'll just take the bin off while we're here. We've got a little bin release button that comes off easy enough, and it's just a pretty standard setup. They all look very similar. You've got the dirt inlet here and the suction inlet. So the suction is produced by the motor, that's where the suction comes from and the suction is produced in the bin through the filter there and then you've obviously got where all the dirt comes in is through that part so pretty standard. Now under, under the dirt bin we've got a filter it says lock and unlock on it so we'll unlock it that's easy enough and there's a washable pleated Hoover Claim HEPA filtration for this so that can be washed, rinsed and dried for 24 hours nothing much to see under there I can see a little bit of a wire I don't know if you can quite see that and it's one of those wires that seems to be coated in something probably to give it some heat resistance, I'm not sure it looks like it's got one of those coatings that you know iron wires have on them so anyway that's the motor filter or the, is that the exhaust filter, that's the exhaust filter little instructions on what to do there as with any bagless cleaner you, they're not maintenance free you have to do more maintenance on them in general than you do with a bagged machine and you must check the filters probably more than they say at least once a month I'd at least look at the filters and see if they need cleaning that way you'll maintain the performance and hopefully prolong the life of the cleaner. Here we have again open padlock, closed padlock, filter access so just turn the top. Seems quite easy I've had some machines like this and they've been very tricky but this is all opening up easy. Another filter here looks like it's a two-parter Yes, whoops a daisy. We've got very easy to clean sponge type filter. Again, rinse, squeeze out, leave to dry, not over direct heat. And you've got another filter under there which you can clean under running water. They say not to use detergents and to use cold water, but to be honest, I've used warm water and mild detergents when I've cleaned filters and they've been fine, but you know, the companies normally say not to. And we've got some cyclones in there and there's a, there's a bit of a seal there and there so filter goes back on and we just line up the open padlock that's it, so that's easy enough another sticker on here attention uh, separate the dustbin from the. Uh, da, da, da. This is telling about telling you about cleaning the filters. That got your bin empty button here. Now this one seems to work from the off. Some models, because of the seal around them, when you first get them, they don't tend to open. But this one, I tried it earlier, does did actually open straight away. What's that? Something there. Ooh. Looks like it's, you can't see it now, it's disintegrated, it looks like it's part of a leaf from a Chinese tree, I expect. They probably had the window open, it was probably a lovely sunny day in China, and they had the windows open, and the radio on, and a leaf blew in, and somehow managed to get inside here. So we can just see, you can see the cyclones in there a bit better. Now this probably all comes out, I... It looks like it does, but I won't force that. I'll see, I'll have to check the instruction book for that. The globe machine did all come apart as well for extra cleaning. 
Hopefully that will come away because you can't really get to the shroud to clean it properly without being able to take the whole thing out of the machine. And like I showed you on the globe, if you watch the globe demo, Hoover did provide access to that. I'll just quickly check my instructions. This is pretty standard Hoover. They're quite fairly well laid out instructions. Fairly easy. They're not just pictures. The instructions I find the most difficult are ones where you have all the text on some pages and all the pictures at the back. But this, of course, has the pictures and text together, so that's good. So, I don't think you can remove, or they don't say you can. No, it's cleaning the pre-motor and exhaust filter, changing the belt or brushes. So at least you can change the belt. No, there are no instructions in the instructions on how to remove the inner shroud and cyclone from the bin. Ah, hmm. well, it's not in the instructions. I can see a lock and unlock. Arrow, I wonder if you do it from this way. No, you can't do it that way. That's just, oh, that's it. So it must come out, but it um, seems to be lacking in the instructions. So unlock is this way, so I'll try and do it. You look at that while I'm fiddling, will you? Well, I won't bother. If I can work out, work out how to get that out, I will show you in the demo video. But anyway, there's the handle, which serves obviously for the handle for the whole vacuum, and it's also, of course, the handle to the bin when you need to take them outside and empty it into your dustbin. So that goes on that way and clicks in. Here must be where the exhaust air vents from at the bottom. You've got your carpet height control, short pile, then sort of short to medium, medium, long, and well, that says long, but I'd say extra long perhaps I don't know try and so that obviously moves easily and you obviously change the setting when it's in the upright position because if you do it when it's in the operating position you'll probably find that that's difficult to do so really for this type of pile of carpet I'd go on short pile but as I said in the reviews a lot of people find it hard to push until they maybe go like that but then again you're not getting the performance if you raise the brush too high so I'm going to see my review, I'll see what it's like on both settings, see if I find it difficult to push. You've got a translucent window at the front so you can just about see the brush. And it says full 13 stair cleaning, powerful multi-cyclonic, easy empty bin and 50% energy saving. Uh, it doesn't say energy saving against what but I assume it means against an equivalent Hoover upright. Let's carefully. I've never seen the underside of one of these. Even in a shop, you know, you don't like to fiddle too much in shops. Otherwise, you get folk coming up to you asking if they can help you. Well, they do in some shops, not in every shop. There we are. Right. A little bit reminiscent of the smart upright. You've got your two smaller wheels at the front here so in conjunction with the larger wheels at the back provide the maneuverability seems fairly fairly solid sole plate and here is the brush roll when this first came out it did appear that there are beta bars on this but then they're, they're not really beta bars it's just the way the brushes are, but I don't know, they might. No, I don't suppose they act as beta bars, really. Looks a fairly good brush roll. Side suction. Well, there are... It is a large channel, so it might suction up to the edge, but it doesn't brush very close to the edge at all. And there's the brush there. And at that side, again, not very close to the edge. Of course, obviously here where you have your belt, there's no brushing action at all. Looks like 
without looking at the instructions, you have to undo one, two, three, four, five screws to release the whole base plate. Then you'll have access to the motor spindle, which will be up here, and you'll be able to replace the belt as needed. And eventually, if your machine lasts long enough for the brushes to wear down, you can buy a complete new brush roll. In the old days, the very old days when Hoover had metal agitators with metal beta bars, you could just buy the replacement brush strips and they just slide in. But the majority of cleaners now, you have to replace the whole unit. Hoover give details of that in the instruction book, the part numbers for the filters and the agitator and the belt. Should you need to replace them. So, there we go, that's it. That's... There we go. Whew. Let's just judge the weight of it. That is a hefty machine, that, I'd say that is quite heavy. Certainly heavier than the Globe. Not, probably not as heavy as a Mila S7. It's fairly comfortable to hold using the carry handle, but it is, it is heavy, yes. Compared to some models, let's just recline the handle. Even with it off, it's, it is, it's hard to push. I mean, hopefully the action of the brush rotating might help pull it along a bit. But then again, if it's very powerful suction-wise, that might affect the maneuverability. I think what I'll do before I finish this video, before I do a full review, I'm just going to switch it on and gauge the suction power and the noise level and have a feeling this is going to be a noisy one. We'll soon find out. Okay, now I've, I've I sneakily turned the machine on before I'm filming this and to be quite honest, I was quite surprised. It's certainly quieter than the globe. Well, Judge, it's hard to judge. Like I said before, it's hard for you to tell on a video, but it's not too bad. I don't know whether it's because this is um, an eco version with a lower wattage motor, but that is quite a pleasant sounding vacuum. It doesn't have a high pitched scream. Obviously it might make a bit more noise when I'm using it. So, I think we'll go on for the short pile setting and I'll just move it back and forth and have a go. I'm absolutely astounded by the sound level of that. That's very good. Um, yes, it's a bit hard to push on the lowest setting. I don't find it too bad. It will vary according to the carpets you have in your home. Let me see, on the higher setting, it probably will be a bit easier, but then of course we're sacrificing possibly some performance. <laughs> on the setting just above the short pile setting it's quite it's not I'm absolutely astounded I was expecting to have an ear deafening scream coming from this vacuum cleaner but no that is surprisingly quiet so it's um let's see if I can gauge suction power briefly <laughs> suction but I felt far worse that's not bad that certainly should be more than adequate for your above floor cleaning so all in all first impressions actually yeah it's a bit weighty but not you know it's not that bad but it is a bit weighty it's a bit hard to push but the noise level that is a surprise a nice surprise, I wasn't expecting that. So anyway, that's part one 
the Hoover Eco G Turbo Power Bagless Uppipe Cleaner. Obviously, stay tuned to my channel. I will be doing a full review of this machine, probably doing a full demo, a performance test, and convenience test as well. But all in all, very early stages, obviously, but it looks promising. But of course, we'll have to wait for the full review until I make my final conclusions. Thanks for watching. If you've liked this video and want to know more, please subscribe and you'll be updated of any new uploads. See you later.